All right, you guys know how much I love giving you an incredible window into a different world every week, right? Well, today's guest opened a window to me back in, I don't know, 1990. Okay, yeah, more than 30 years ago, I'm old. When she performed a song called Love Will Lead You Back, and it was on The Tonight Show. So I'm sitting there in my apartment in Cleveland, okay? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm, thank you. Blown away by this whippet of a woman on stage with this cascade of curly hair, but a voice that could blow the paintings off the wall. It was so strong. At that very moment, I became a forever huge fan of Taylor Dane. It's a rare singer-songwriter who debuts in the 80s. More than three decades later, their songs are still playing everywhere. And I'm not just talking about on the oldies stations. From her first smash hit, Tell It to My Heart, to 17, wrap your mind around that, 17 subsequent top 20 singles, including three that hit number one, Prove Your Love, I'll Always Love You, and my personal favorite, Love Will Lead You Back, Taylor has sold more than 75 million albums and singles worldwide award-winning chart topper, massive success, appearances on Fox as the Masked Singer. All good, end of story, right? Oh yeah, and she was on Broadway. Hardly. You guys know, because we have talked about this, success is not a final destination. It's a way station, sometimes followed by drops, detours, and yes, derailments. In July of last year, Taylor faced one of those. After going in for a routine colonoscopy, doctors discovered she had cancer. Taylor, of course, is not the only one to fall victim to this cruel disease. We've lost a lot of celebrities, including actors Chadwick Boseman and Taylor's good friend, Kirstie Alley. Here to discuss her journey in battle is the iconic Taylor Dane. And Taylor, welcome to Everyone Talks to Liz. Oh, thank you so much. What an intro. Amazing. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. My, my pleasure. And I'm just hitting the ceiling here. I'm levitating. I'm so psyched to be talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good all I'm, right I'm hearing, a, I'm hearing a little bit of noise in the background tell me where you are tell me what you're doing I am now at Morongo Casino we have a show tomorrow night I'm on tour with Sheena Easton and we're starting this tour up so yeah you're gonna hear casino you might hear some you know jackpot winners I don't know <laughs> with some blackjack winners either way oh yeah. my god touring that's so amazing and tell me about the crowds oh yeah, you you said three decades. So it's it's very, very eclectic. It's kids, it's it's teens, it's it's you know, people in their fifties that were fans of, you know, that started off in the clubs and now they're like, Hey, <laughs> we're gonna Here come I to am. the casino tonight, man. We're going out for the weekend, you know. <laughs> Who knows? It's it's definitely eclectic, it's great, it's you know, generational. I I love my audiences. And, well, uh, you know, I am, a I'm a Peloton fan. They play a lot of your songs. And, and I'm always <laughs> thinking about, you know, you go back to 1987, your hit song, Tell It To My Heart. That yeah. just lasted out on the scene. Who were you before that moment? Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, 1987 was an amazing year. That's where, you know, I started with the single came out and I, you know, I was just coming out of high school and is, you know, dreams where, so dreams. Where were you in high school? Uh, Baldwin, Baldwin Senior High, Long Island. Yep. And, and you were, you were an Island girl, Long Island girl singing your heart out before then where on, on stage in school plays at little clubs. Oh, everything, you know, like, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, but I grew up, you know, it was right outside of New York city. So, I mean, I was in New York and I was in, three different bands even before I broke by the you know remember 18 that was the magic age so everything was happening everything everything I was in clubs and bands and doing everything I needed to do to you know being tenacious as usual did you know that tell it to my heart would would just hit the collective cortex of music lovers at that moment <laughs> you know sometimes when you when you start to sing a song or you you, you write it you go this is this is going to be a smash hit. You know, I think I knew that would love will lead you back, but this is, this was during a time, you know, it, 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 there was no yellow brick road, you know, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no um, connect the dots. It's not like you go to school and get a degree to become a, you know, a pop star. You try. And in those days, you know, there wasn't internet, there wasn't cell phones. Like this was, you know, everything through, you know, you didn't get signed to a label. You didn't have a label deal, you know? So I did everything possible and hustled and did 12 inches. Did This was a very grassroots approach. We were going to mm -hmm. release it 
you know, independently at first, even if we didn't get label attention. And that's how we, we really got it signed. We got it signed. I got signed single, single option album. And that was with the strength of producing and putting Tell It To My Heart together. And <clears throat> we were going to release it ourselves. And Arista picked it up as a 12 inch, literally. Oh, and yeah. from there, things blew up. I mean, it just, you know, took off and went number one all around the world. And obviously in Europe first. That must have been so amazing for you. And, you know, I'm not, I always am fascinated to think, what were your parents thinking at this point? Tell me about your parents and your family. <laughs> well, we're from New York. What were they thinking? They were like, it's more what I was thinking. It was just like, listen, you know, when you have a dream and a journey, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, I was home with this. This was a, um, I had a voice. I certainly had it at a very young age and I was working at it and I was doing at it and there was no stopping me kind of thing. So I can promise you, they were thinking, holy shit, <laughs> pretty much, and, you know, and when it broke, you know, my yeah. dad's the one that lent me the money for Rick and I uh, to, to do this 12 inch. That's, you know, I'll never forget. We said, I said, dad, we'll get you the money back. Don't worry. I can play in some of the clubs and we'll get you the money back for this. It was only like six grand, seven grand. But, you know, at the time, 1987, you know. Yeah. How soon did you pay him back? <laughs> I think pretty quickly. Or number yeah. one <laughs> in labor. I don't oh, know. Oh my gosh. Well, you talked about Love Will Lead You Back. Um, that to me, I was just listening to it the other day before I even knew that I would get you on. And it makes me want to cry it, the way you emote within it. And, and I have to tell you, one of the problems that I have with singers today, everything's auto tuned. It's almost so annoyingly perfect and hermetically sealed. There's no emotion. They're just mouthing the words in many cases. You know, what is it that, that is special about how you approach recording a oh. song? I, I mean, everything you're saying is, is, is pretty much hitting home. I mean, look, I, I was meticulous when we would comp my vocals and, you know, every take was six takes and then we'd put it together and make the magic. But, you know, when you're hearing the heart and you're hearing the passion and you're feeling, you know, Love Will Lead You Back is an iconic song. It's a classic hit written by the great Diane Warren. So mm. the magic of the raw, the, the words, the lyrics, the melody, I mean, it's never going anywhere. And, you know, that had to be proven to me. It's not like you know that when you're 20 years old and you're singing these songs. You know, that's the test of time. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm sure that moment where you get out on stage to put it out there, say, for example, on the David Letterman show, which was on back mm. then, or Jay yeah. Leno's show. Sure. Were you nervous to debut that song? Oh, God, I don't remember. All I know is, you know, maybe the moments you're talking about, like when you saw it on Jay Leno, I think that was, you know, just that moment where we went number one that week. And it was, you know, he he uh, he gave me the gold album, you know, the gold uh award you know the album mm -hmm. award when it when it reaches that and it was just some beautiful status stuff you know and I would just remember that moment with that as far as being nervous for a show the fast forward 30 years later I'm sure I've had many of those yeah moments. yeah people always ask me you get nervous before doing the newscast and I, I always say I'm always a little bit nervous and I think that it makes sure. you you know on your heels and on your toes and you make sure that you you know you want to aim to be the best. You aim for perfection. I mean, you aim for the stars, maybe you snag the moon if you're lucky. Um, right. So life's going great after all of these hit songs. You, you make it to Broadway. Aida. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, amazing time. You know, that was uh, early 2000. And um, yeah, hit show on Broadway. And uh, it means a show that I kind of went in early with Audra McDonald and a couple other people, you know, when you start a, when they start to write and perform and try out the music and that was with Tim Rice and Elton John, obviously. And, you know, we had it in a lot of workshop forms. And I remember I had to step away from it because obviously I had a, a touring career and music, but uh, coming back to it and then, you know, filling in for uh, Sherry Renee and coming in there and playing M. Naris mm. was beautiful. Totally yeah. different experience to be on Broadway, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 1000 percent when you're when you're when you're you know film and television you know look when i'm on stage every night the audience changes and that's one thing i learned with broadway no matter what you're saying the same words and you're doing you know but every night you know in the theater the audience changes so the experience is different yeah plus you have to act you're, you're not Absolutely. just singing you're definitely or dancing acting. and you're in costume and multiple ones as far as i'm concerned for that part <laughs> Did you have any moments where things just didn't go right? And this, you were really quite new to that. Oh, thing. yeah. We have a lot of games they play. 
uh, somebody put a whoopee cushion under one of, uh, I, I don't even know what I said. I think I said something, a line where I said, well, that's a photograph. And I, I don't think in uh, ancient Egypt there was photography going on. So yeah, we had some bloopers. One time I got locked in, in the, I, I got stuck in the elevator and in costume like that, they had to like cut me out. It was just some, yeah, it's just stuff you'd never, you know, Broadway is just to the end, babe.